Welcome to Los Angeles, super city of the future, the metropolis of Southern California. For the benefit of discriminating visitors, this car has been equipped with the Beta Car Visitor Guidance System. Now you're ready to go so that you can concentrate fully on your driving. Switch off the guidance system when you hear the tone. Have a nice day. I honestly don't know how helpful the gentle voice of baby car would be. It could really be a distraction under these kind of conditions. You see, I think freeway driving is interesting in itself. From up here, you see the most weird, extraordinary places and things. And everyone would say, Barbie dolls, for God's sake, and look round for a better look, and sort of drift over in the next lane and prank some little old lady from Pasadena in her boss Mustang, and bash, that'd be the end of a beautiful guided tour. Rainer Bannum for me was very interesting because it, he was my way into thinking about the city of Los Angeles and why I wanted to explore the place. He was quite unusual. He started out first of all working for a theatre in Norwich. He was quite a theatrical person himself. The latter part of the war he was an aircraft fitter, was apparently invalided out. So he started doing something completely different. It's 63, I think, that he gets an invitation to go and speak at a design conference in Aspen, Colorado. And I think it's at that moment he starts visiting the US quite seriously. In terms of form, Los Angeles breaks all the rules. And yet I would maintain it is still, in spite of that, a great city and a significant city. He was a prolific architectural critic. He was a very respectable architectural historian a really major figure in post-war British architecture. Baedeker is a fiction, a joke tribute to Karl Baedeker, the father of the modern guidebook. A useful fiction. Devising a guide is a good way to explain a city, and Los Angeles needs some explaining, because it's normally regarded as an unspeakable sprawling mess, though not, certainly not by me. At the time, the understanding of Los Angeles was very peculiar. LA was an example of what cities were not supposed to be. Although it was vaguely understood to be a place that was booming, that was doing very well, it was a place that was thought of as having no culture, no architecture of any interest at all. In the late 1960s, the great journalist Adam Raphael described it as a stinking sewer. It was a place that was really not thought of as having any value at all. So to take it seriously would have been something quite novel. We really ought to level with you. This guided tour isn't taking you to any of the tourist spots you might expect. Because we believe that the discriminating visitor will want to see what the city of the future is doing to cure the evils of the past. On the one hand, it's got a whole realm of fantastic architecture just by the roadside. You've got restaurants in the shape of hot dogs or bowler hats or hamburgers or whatever. There's a whole genre of architecture which is, you know, frankly ridiculous. On the other hand, it's got some very serious modern architecture and it became more and more apparent just how rich it was in those areas. Los Angeles is certainly unlike the London where I usually live and move and have my being. And it's as remote as Mars from Norwich, the city where I was born and brought up.
in the film Rain of Bannon Loves Los Angeles, which was made in 72, he talks about Norwich. He calls it a standard issue English cathedral city. But on the other hand, he says that one of the things that you could do there was go to the movies. In those days, it was the penny pictures. And there, when we had the penny for admission, we were transported to Los Angeles. The film shows the film house that, that he used to go to, and it's just a, a shed, <laughs> more or less. Very, very unpretentious place. So he's fascinated by America right from the beginning. You know, ultimately is what drives him to do a whole lot of work on American architecture, but also eventually to move there in the mid-70s. He learns to drive in order to make sense of the city, and he is absolutely in love with driving. He had a very intense knowledge of the place, but also he projects all kinds of fantasies onto it. Freedom is one of the big fantasies. He's acutely conscious of social class, and for him, LA and Southern California in general represent a place that is free of the restrictions of social class. LA is, as we all know, it's a place that, that has all kinds of social and racial divisions. Bannon doesn't really see those things. Can I get through to San Pedro this no, way? Mom. No, sir, you cannot. Well, there's a road on the map. Yeah, but this is a private road. You can't go through here. I didn't know there were any private roads. And here, over the ocean in Pacific Palisades, is the house that really taught the world's architecture lovers to come to Los Angeles. The house that Charles Eames, the great chair designer and filmmaker, created in 1949 and showed the world that machine-age materials like glass and steel could be beautiful, even pretty, and make a proper setting for beautiful objects. Houses of the 60s and 70s uh, tend to get talked about in relation to the case study project. These were houses that were sponsored by a very progressive architectural magazine called Arts and Architecture. They are very simple, very pragmatic, um, very economical. The Stahl House, designed by Pierre Koenig, is one of the most interesting modernist houses. It's very small, it's up in the Hollywood Hills. Two things I particularly like about it. One is the, um, the glazing, the, the fact that so much of the house is glass, and that glass makes a beautiful frame for the view beautifully photographed by Julius Schulman. It's a, a really just lovely moment in, in architectural modernism. The other thing is the pool. The pool is at least as big as the house. This is a house that really celebrates the climate, this outdoors lifestyle, a sense of freedom, a sense of well, wanting to be in this very seductive landscape. LA is a, a city full of fantasies. But I don't know whether it's really a style or whether it's really a frame of mind, whether it isn't a special kind of Los Angeles mass-produced fantasy for people to live in. Dreams, domestic dreams that money can buy, but dreams like the dreams of Hollywood. Perhaps most of the population has come to LA in order to live out some kind of fantasy. whether it's a, you know, a fantasy of being in the movies or it's a fantasy of just simply you know, living close to nature. And that's very strongly present in the architecture. Houses like this always bring out the Hollywood private eye in me. A bit later on, you, you get houses which are much more demonstrative, much more expressionistic. Architects like John Lautner built an extraordinary house called the Sheets House. This is a house which is one of the most extraordinary houses in the city. 
It is spectacular in every way. It is a totally hedonistic house. It's built around a pool. It looks like the most extraordinary party house you could imagine. Mirrors everywhere. <laughs> Incredible place. The original cover of the Bannum book, Los Angeles, is a bigger splash by David Hockney. He chose that image, and the, that image is pure hedonism. He describes a place that's fundamentally about enjoying yourself at, at, at a certain level. So the idea of a, a city that's hedonistic is still a really powerful idea. He's basically saying, this is a city that functions on its own terms. You have to understand it as something new, something novel, something different. It's a fantasy, but it's another Englishman going to California and finding in the lifestyle or something very appealing and attractive. And now, at the end of your sightseeing day, you are headed towards the ocean and one of the most famous and best-loved sights in all of Los Angeles, the sunset.